Hello, Flea Feet Running Club, and welcome to, I know it's my, first virtual functional strength class. As many of you know, I love compliments, and so I feel like functional strength or any strength is a great compliment to the running and walking that you guys do outside, inside, on the pavement, on the treadmill. Now, let me say, this is an amazing opportunity to kind of take a step away from mileage and distance and take a step into some of the strength worlds just because our volume outside is a little bit lower as we kind of reset and refocus. This is amazing to up what you're doing in a functional strength capacity. Let, let me talk about what I'm gonna be using today. Hopefully there's things that are just lying around your house that you can be using to aid in your efforts in this functional strength. First, of course, I love stability balls. Hopefully you'll have one bouncing around the house somewhere. I'll give you opportunities or modifications if you don't have one. I'm gonna be using a box behind me. Um, I'm gonna be using a mat, of course, some dumbbells, although you do not have to have dumbbells. I have been known to use sand in water jugs or water in milk jugs or anything laying around the house that's consistent. I've been you known to use my toddlers. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. Body weight is an amazing thing too. So you can just use your relative body weights to get you where you want to go. Now, as far as how I structure my functional strength classes, I personally like to start on the mats. I like to start with muscle activation. I like to start with joint mobility. I like to start with, um, with stability or core work. Why? Well, several reasons. One is the fact that a lot of us are very talented athletes and so we get the job done one way or the other, even if it's not the correct way. Our bodies know what is familiar to them. So if you are quad dominant, sometimes you can overwork the front part of your legs and underwork the back part of your legs simply because there is not a central nervous system path way that tells your body any different. So a lot of these first few exercises are muscle activation exercises that are starting to send some central nervous system stimulant up to your brain. I like to do it at the beginning because you're fresh, you're focused, you're excited, you're not fatigued yet. Plus it gives us an opportunity to send that pathway now in hopes that you'll use it later on when the exercises get a little bit harder um, and, and a little bit more difficult. So Let's start out on our backs, on this ball. I like to start with our glutes. So lay flat on your back, pretty please. So I'm gonna lay down, and again, this box is behind me. I'm gonna use this ball. I would like a 90, 90 degree bend. Hips from my thighs to my torso are 90 degrees, like a right angle, and then a 90 degree bend right here in my back. Now, before we get started, I don't actually want you guys to move a thing. So what I want you to do is take those feet, smack those knees together, smack your feet together. Your feet are elevated, so it'll be a little bit easier to do this exercise. I want you to kind of lose what I would call a core draw in, meaning that I'm really arching my back here. Look, I can take my hand and put my hand all the way in between my back and the mat. What I actually want you to do is try to roll your hips. All right, you actually roll those hips. So I'm gonna smash every one of my lower back vertebrae onto the ground. Some people call this a dead bug because there's a bug in between your back and the mat and you're gonna squish that bug like you're trying to smash it on that mat. So again, lose it for a little bit if you need to and then push your lower back down to kind of get it back. I'll do it one more time just so you guys can get the, uh, get the thing. Is remember, and I know this is a little bit of a different movement, but I'm gonna lose it as I arch my back, and then I'm gonna gain it back again. Now, I really like for you guys to hold this one. So as I'm holding, I'm really intentionally trying to push my lower back into the ground. I'm gonna try to relax everything else. 
So I'm gonna relax my shoulders, I'm gonna lay my hands down to my side. All I'm doing is trying to keep that pressure on my lower back. Now, if this is easy for you, then I want you to start focus on your breathing. So it's almost like a yin and a yang. If you're not quite here yet, don't worry about it. So I'm gonna take that lower back, I'm gonna smash it into the ground, I'm gonna keep it there, and you're gonna have to kind of work to get it there. Now I want you to do is try to breathe, and I'm gonna try to put my hands on my lower stomach, I will right below my belly button, maybe even the, the, the waistband of my britches, those are pants for those of you guys who aren't southern bumpkins like me. I'm gonna try to take in so much air that the, my lower stomach is actually rising as my lower back is pushing it down. I'm gonna pause here for a moment and let you focus on that. So take a nice big deep breath. All right guys, I want you guys to relax. I was holding for a little bit of course. All right, now if you are there and that was a struggle, I want you to continue with the same thing, all right? I want you, I'm gonna go ahead and lose it again just so I can feel the difference. And then I'm gonna push my lower back back down into the ground. Again, with my feet up, should be a little bit easier. I'm gonna relax my shoulders. I'm gonna put my arms down on the side. I'm gonna intentionally, and I'm working hard to do so, pressing down on my lower back, raising up through my lower abs or my lower belly here. Now, if this is easy for you, I want you to add just a few more isometric muscle contractions. So now those glutes, I literally want you to squeeze your butt cheeks together like there's something really, really, really important in between there. So relax. Again, your upper body, lower back is down, belly's taking big deep breaths, knees are squeezing together now, your butt's squeezing together now, just hold. So I'm working my core here included in that are my hip extenders, that namely my two hip extenders are my glutes and my inner thighs are also known as the adductors. Why don't you guys relax again. And let's just hold one more time, 30 seconds. So I have it kind of on my clock here. Press your lower back, take in deep breaths, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your knees and then hold. Ten more seconds, guys. I want you guys to keep working here. You should be shaking a little bit. That's okay. It's your brain trying to figure out how much of a stimulus this should go by. All right, guys, go ahead and relax. Now, throughout this whole entire video, I want you to try to do the best you can to try to keep that same core braced. Now we're just going to work on your glutes here in a little bit. So real quickly, full form check, arms down, lower backs pressed, glutes are tight, my knees stay at 90 degrees. Now again, a lot of you guys are going to have to use this box over here, that's fine. What I want you to do for a set of 12, so I want you guys to drive straight down through your heels, raise up through your hips, and then drop it right back down. I'll do 12 with you. So drive down through your heels, raise up through your hips and then bring it right back down with you. Drive down through your heels, raise up through your hips, bring it right back down. Excellent. Now one of the things as you guys are continuing on, one of the things I want you guys to focus on is this ball has to stay in the exact same spot. So if you feel like it's going around, keep going. If you feel like that ball is going everywhere, perhaps it's time to put your feet up on your dining room chair, your kitchen chair, maybe even the edge of your couch. The other thing is you've got to make sure that that ball stays nice and close, close to your butt. Don't let those knees come out. If those knees come out, then you're trying to use the front part of your legs, not the back part of your legs. And so again, maybe it's time to go back to a box. Don't worry, you'll feel just the exact same amount of burn on the other side. So let's get rid of this ball for a moment and let's go into a single leg glute bridge. So if it's single leg, I'm gonna start with my left foot here. I'm gonna take my left foot, I'm gonna keep it nice and close 
to my glutes. I'm going to straighten out my right side. Now I'm going to show you right side only, and then I'm going to ask that you pause this video and do that left side here too. But in this position, now I'm just going to raise my hips very similar to what you just did. Notice how long the right side of my body is, meaning I'm not just lifting up with my foot to help me raise those hips up. So my hips actually should initiate the movement. At this point, honestly, I would rather you go not necessary for height, but for body shapes. Remember that lower back is still pressed against that mat. I want you to make sure that you use your glutes and not just arching as you're going down. So lower back, belly tight, lift, hold, one mile, two mile, and then bring it right back down again. Your butt and your heel should hit at the exact same time. So re-brace, reset, right? Belly up, bring it right back down again, right? Brace, reset, hips up, one mile, two mile, right back in. Okay, pause video, and let's go ahead and switch to the other side. All right, now I know everybody has heard of a plank, but I want you guys to introduce your planks into your functional strength. Now, we did those dead bugs at the beginning, hoping that some of the things that you just did on those dead bugs are going to carry over to what you're gonna do in a plank. Now, I'm gonna show you the body position, just like we did a while ago. I want you to pause video and give me two sets of, perhaps it's two sets of 10 seconds right now, perhaps it's two sets of 20 seconds, perhaps two sets of 30 seconds, but give me two sets. What I want you guys to do, and I'll walk you through it, is just try to relax your shoulders, find that nice, good body position, and make sure your glutes are involved with this as well. I'll show you what I mean. So on your elbows, again, you can go on your elbows and your knees, you can go on your elbows and your toes. First and foremost though, I want you guys to try to relax through your shoulders and not keep up tight. Make sure your shoulders are underneath, excuse me, your elbows are underneath your shoulders. You kind of relax those shoulders. I'm gonna brace my belly. And I obviously don't have the floor to help me out, but I know what that position is. And when you're ready, I want you guys to lift your knees if possible up off the ground so relax shoulders you should be able to move here belly tight glutes tight and I want you to hold all right now next I gotta tell you, these are some of my favorite exercises. If you've been into anything, uh, rehabilitation, or perhaps even a yoga, you will see a couple of these exercises done. And again, to me, might as not rehab it, let's prehab it. I like to call this particular one, a bird dog. There's a straight leg version and there's a bent leg version. I'm gonna show you both. And then again, I would like for you to pause video and give me two sets of. Perhaps you start at 10 seconds, perhaps you start at 20 seconds, maybe even 30 seconds, but I want you to give me two sets of whatever you can give me of both of these. This is a bird dog. So you guys are gonna start, well, some people call this quadruped, some people call it tabletop. My hands are gonna be directly underneath my shoulders. My knees are gonna be directly underneath my hips. Now, before we find this exact bird dog move, what I want you guys to do is going back to my best yoga days, flatten out your toes. I want you to give me a few cat and cows. So a cat is when you take your, um, your head, tuck your chin to your chest, and really round out that back. Some people call this the mean cat. Some people call this the turtle shape. When you're done, you're kind of doing the opposite. You're going to look straight up to the ceiling. You're going to lower your belly down. And I'd like for you guys to take in lots of deep breaths and just go through a couple of those exercises and just get some movement in your back. After all that core, you perhaps need a little bit of stretch here in your back. And I don't care how fast or how slow you move, just make sure that you have nice, big, deep breaths and kind of move through it to the best of your range of motion. Now I want you to do one more. So one more, head up, belly down. 
one more, head down, belly up, and then do the best you can to divide the two in the middle to try to find the best neutral back that you can give me. So this was an extreme, this is an extreme, and then you follow right back down, belly tight, right? Core braced, pushing down through my arms, my knees are underneath my hips and I'm squeezing. So from here, try not to lean. Okay, so I have four points of contact. One, two, three, four. I'm pushing through them. Try not to lean on two sides of the contact, but what I'm gonna do is try to fire straight back through my left heel without trying to take pressure off anything. If this is enough for you, of course, stay here. If you wanna make it a little bit harder, then take another point of contact away from the ground and give me two and give me what I call a straight leg bird dog. Now for to me, the biggest mistake everybody's gonna be making here is gonna be kind of leaning over to that side. So do the best you can, focus on having a ball or a glass of water, All right, balance on the right, small of your back and try to do the best you can not to steal that water, spill that water. Okay, so real quickly, let's show you a bent leg. And again, I want you to watch both of these and then perhaps pause video and give me two sets. Let's do my form check real quick. Head up, belly down. Head down, belly up. Find the exact middle. Okay, brace my stomach. Push through my arms. Now this time my knee is gonna be bent, but as you notice, my knee is already bent. So don't unbend it. Now just take your heel and try to fire that heel now straight up towards the ceiling. And again, without doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Right, so knees bent, heel straight up. Sometimes this is enough. Your knee wants to clear your back, all right, but it doesn't want to do so with any rotation. Try to use your glute to fire that heel straight up. If you can, take that right arm and extend it out. Now, if you guys were in my class, what I would actually do is just rotate those through. So I would do a one plank, do a series on both sides of straight leg bird dogs. I would do a series on both sides of bent leg bird dogs. And again, there is no shame or game going 10 seconds right now of each. That still adds up to really great, great, great core stabil stabilization. And let me just remind you that in a physiology world, core stabilization is trying to minimize the rotation. So you're gonna feel yourself kind of fighting some of this wiggle and wobble, right? You're gonna feel yourself kind of shaking. That's okay, okay? Start small while you can handle it until that brain knows how much to kind of force to give you to keep that nice and smooth muscle contraction, as well as that little bit of, you know, rotation. Do the best you can to keep that core tight and see if you can minimize that to the best of your ability, right? Once we've done our core stuff, it's time to stand up and get some real work done. Okay, okay, you guys are warmed up or if anything else, your brain and your body are talking to each other, which is half the reason for a warm up. Let's talk about some, yeah, larger dynamic muscle groups. I love lunges. A lunges are an amazing way of making sure that your single leg strength is balanced between right and left. I do think, however, people do lunges mm, incorrectly from time to time. So I'm going to show you what to do on the ground and then give you some modifications on how to make them a little easier, a little bit harder. Let me first to go to say if you feel like your form is amazing, which I know some of you guys perhaps do, the only way I weight up any of my exercises here, functional strength, is I make uh, individuals hold weight up over their head. So again, they're activating their core plus it's a lot easier to hold posture with weight up over your head than letting that external weight kind of carry you down. So I'm going to challenge you instead of perhaps holding weight to make these a little bit more difficult, maybe you can put something up over your head where your ears go by your elbows to make these a little bit harder. So let's talk about your lunges first. Let's get this box out of the way to begin with. What I first want you guys to do is just get a uh, 
um, perhaps I have this little foamy Airx pad. Maybe it's just a blanket that you guys have at home. Why I like to do this first again is just to make sure that you're not doing these incorrectly and perhaps hurting something that doesn't need to be hurting. So what I first want you to do is took your knee and put your knee at the bottom of this Airx pad. So your knee then is in line with your hip. You're pressing your hips forward and your belly backwards, just like that dead bug. So obviously you can see why we want these particular exercises up with those. Is the same form react. So take that belly, hold it tight. Now try to fill it as, as, with as much air as you can. We're not sucking it in, right? But you're here rounding that stomach out. My knee is underneath my hip, which is underneath my shoulder, which is right under my arm. So from here, take that back toe, curl that back toe up and under. So now I can just push my body straight up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and have you just come right straight down and pause for a moment. Did you hold it? Did you keep those belly, that belly forward? Did you keep that air pushing outwards? Did you keep your knee in line with your hip, in line with your shoulder, in line with your hands? Okay, so really reach up. You can go here, but I will tell you, ears and elbows smacking with your hands above are even better. So drive through those heels, stand up and then drop that knee straight back down again. And again, I would like for you guys to do repetitions of anywhere between eight and 12 reps. All right, maybe this is just considered a little bit of a warm up, getting ready for the real show, okay? I can easily take this weight, let me go ahead and switch my feet so I get a little bit of balance here. Again, same thing, knee under my hip, hip under my shoulder, now that I have a weight, nothing changes. My ears are by my elbows, pushing my hips forward. I'm taking big deep breaths against my waistband and my pants, and I do the same thing. Straight up motion, straight down motion. Straight up motion, straight down motion. Okay, continue this. Again, pause video if you'd like. Continue this for just a set of 12 on each side. Think it as a warm up. All right guys, enjoy. Now you did your first set, <coughs> excuse me, you did your first set of lunges or Bulgarian split squats. What I like to do is actually superset my exercises. So what one body part or when one body part is resting, you're getting another one worked. So supersets, you're working on two different exercises or muscle groups, excuse me, muscle groups with two different exercises and you're basically doing like an AB pattern. So after your first set of lunges, my suggestion is to go a set of push-ups. I'm gonna set of push-ups on top of my slide board here, but just to make sure that you guys can see me. Now, everybody knows push-ups. However, I want you guys to think about all that core stability work that we just did. Do not lose it only because you're working something bigger and not just the core itself. Let me go through what a perfect push-up shape would look like and then give you guys some in-betweenies to do. And I am not against doing modified push-ups. However, I do have a trick on my sleeve that actually is a little bit, um, maybe not easier, but a lot more effective in the way we do push-ups. Okay, so push-ups real quick. You guys are down. Make sure that your hands are right underneath your shoulders real quick. My suggestion is to start in the push your now. Before I ever push up as my landmark, just to make sure. And then before I even start to take a deep breath to see if I can just push my belly or even raise my body with the air that I have in my belly. Now, But for here, so belly tight, deep breath, push up, and then bring your belly right back down again. Now I'm going to go ahead and relax just because I'm talking here, but what I want is the ability to come up 
And then what we should do is hit everything at the same time. So my chest hits the exact same time as my thighs, right? Hits the exact same time as my belly button. Okay, so push up. What I don't want to see is it kind of worm on the way down. Now, in between, again, work at the top. So let's say you're not quite there yet. So my suggestion is stay at the top, belly tight. See if you can let some air in and do what's called an eccentric push-up. So slowly, and what I mean by that, so slowly, right? Touch that body at the same time. Warm it up, I don't care. The up doesn't even matter, just get up. Find that push-up shape again. Belly, full air, squeeze your core. Lower, 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 lower. And then bring it right back down again. Now let me say, Eccentrics is an amazing way of working your strength. Probably better than any of the concentric or the up phase of a push-up. So if you're in between anything, and maybe even go on your knees as you lower yourself down, work on the down, forget about working on the up for a little bit. Great way of working your core, your upper body. If you try it a few times, you'll realize it's a lot harder than it works and it gets a lot strength a lot faster. So again, one set of lunges, one set of push-ups, okay? 12 over here, maybe even six to 12. Those eccentrics, it doesn't take much. Do two or three sets and then move on. All right, you guys are probably sweating a little bit now that our lunges and our push-ups are done. I like to work on a different kind of lunge. It is called a lateral lunge. You can do this in a couple different ways. Now, a lateral lunge is gonna be a little bit different of a shape. I'm gonna show you the shape, and then we're gonna have a little fun with it. You do not need a slide board. I've been one to put a sock on and have a good time on my tile or wood floor. So what happens in a lateral lunge? I'm gonna take a step in front of my slide board first. I'm gonna take my feet just slightly wider than hip width just a couple inches on each side of my hip. Now one side of my body is gonna look like I'm doing a regular squat while the other side is going to have a nice straight leg so I get an amazing stretch to the inside part of my thighs. My left side is gonna be the working muscle. My right side is going to be the synergy. Now keep in mind when you're doing something lateral, keep your toes forward. Okay, yes you're kind of moving side to side but I want you to keep the focus still front to back. So toes are facing forward, arms are out to the side. I'm gonna set my glutes like I'm trying to make a butt print on that wall back behind me. Okay, so I'm gonna set that, see, sit, 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 push through those hips and come right back up and stand. I'm gonna do it again. Sit, 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 sit. I drive my heels, stand back in. Notice my knees aren't going everywhere. My knee is directly over my toe. And yes, I might have a little bit of motion going to my left, but most of it is going backwards. Let's try it on that right side. So toes staying forward, arms straight out in front of you. Hips, 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 hips. Straight back, bring it right back on in. One more, hips, back, 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 back. Bring it right back up and get ready to roll. If you are there, please do a set of 10 or 12 on each side. If you wanna make it a little bit harder, again, find yourself a tile floor and a nice good sock and have one foot unsocked or a bare foot so your foot can grip the ground a little bit. Think of it as your stable leg and then one foot that slides around on your sock. Think of it as your unstable leg. Now, when you're doing this particular exercise, what I want you to do is keep most of the weight, 60 to 70% of the weight on your foot that's the stable surface, and then you're moving your unstable leg. It looks like this. Still motion going to the side. A lot of my weight shifted to my left. Push my hips, push my hips straight back. Still trying to make that wall print with my butt. And then bring it right back in. Again, hopefully you're not seeing any motion sideways going on with my knees or my feet. My feet are still pressing forward. I push my hips going backwards. I push my hips all the way forward. So it's almost like hips back, arms forward. Hips forward, arms back. 
Of course, you have to move the sock from either side. A wood floor cleaner is an amazing way just to slip your foot on it too, if that's an option. 12 on each leg. If you wanna do them with the extended version, please feel free to do so. All right, now the hardest thing to do at home sometimes, and sometimes even the hardest thing to do in here, is we push, push, push all day with the front part of our body. We don't pull, pull, pull on the back of our body. So we have to find some way to oppose a push-up. And to be honest, we should be able to row or pull significantly more than we can push or lift. And that's not always the case. So I do want you guys to look around the house and see if there's something that you can find um, that you can do some sort of a row with. I'll switch it over uh, a, a little bit. If you guys even have some ropes, some TRX, whatever it is, you need to be able to oppose a push-up and get the back side of your body because we just worked the front side of your body as well. So I am going to use these eight pound weights here. You might, again, Drink some milk, drink some water, find something around that house. Now I will say, this one scares me a little bit to give to the whole crew here, just because this is a really hard exercise to get correct, to be honest with you. But I feel like if we keep doing some of those dead bugs and cores, we'll be there before you know it, okay? So soften up your knees. So I would call this bent, I would call this straight. So it's kind of in between. The dumbbells are gonna go right in front of you. And what I'm asking that you do, turning to the side, here what I ask that you do is kind of hinge to the hips now notice I already did it I still try to keep my belly I still try to minimize that curvature in my back I'm here now I'm going to keep that belly braced but I'm going to kind of lean into this exercise a little bit so my belly is tight my arms are tight I'm going to roll my thumbs to my armpits and bring it right back down again the last thing you want is this turtle shape that we just worked on and maybe even without weights you two good could do a couple of cats, a couple of cows, and try to find the exact middle of them. All right, hold your belly tight, roll your thumbs to your armpits, and drip right back down again. Thumbs to your armpits, right back down. Let's do 10. This is three, four, five. I will say the hardest part is to keep their shape. So this is actually a really good exercise for that core. You just need to make sure that you're not doing so or bending with that back. Let's do one more. Squeeze, one more. Make sure and stand up. That's your horizontal row. Now, just like we did with the push-ups, what I would hope that you do is superset, right? So do a set with your lateral lunges, do a set with your rows. Somewhere in between 10 to 12 lateral lunges, if you start with eight, great to the rows, back to the lunges, back to the rows. Try to get two sets of each one of those exercises. All right, last exercise of the day. I love glutes and hamstrings. I feel like they are the um, hmm, long lost muscle groups. Well, not only just runners and walkers, but everyone across the board here. So I'm gonna do some different hamstring curls. Again, a little bit of aggressive, and again, that needs a ball. If you do not have a ball, then just continue, perhaps the second set of those double leg bucks. In a lot of my classes, I like to end the way we started. So back to those double leg bucks. Um, if you can just do a, a, a one more last set before calling it quits, that would be great. If you're up to it, let's make it a little bit harder. And you only have to do two sets of this one, so that is a good thing. So we'll get, roll on your back. A lot of people do hamstring curls a little bit different than what I like to. Hamstrings are very bi-articulate bi muscles, so its job, or their jobs, I guess, is to extend your hips, which I'm doing here. Okay, its job also is to flex the knees, which I'm about to do right here and bring it right back down. So to make sure that the muscle groups do exactly what they want, first and foremost is you need to make sure that your hips are high and they stay high. So hips up, way high up, okay, belly tight. Keep them there, even use your hands if you need to. Take your legs out, okay, pull them back in, and then set those hips right back down again. Okay, so up first, 
keep them high, out, keep them high, in, keep them high, bring it right back down again. Now, just like the push-up, if you're not able to keep those hips up tall, or maybe even choose to do this anyway, is to keep the eccentric motion going here. So hips up, belly tight, and I just want you to slowly lower your body down to that straight position, and then drop it right back down again. Hoping that you, when you drop, this is still braced, which I know I just sucked mine in, and your belly. And then you can hit the reset and start all over again. So hips up, okay, belly tight, slowly in control, come right back down, drop your hips, hit reset again. Now this one again is pretty aggressive, so if you can only start with six to eight repetitions, that's fine, okay? Pause about 30 to 45 seconds in between, repeat again. Okay, now let me just thank you guys so much. This is the first virtual functional strength. If you guys have ever come to any of my classes, I just like to jip, 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 and jab, jab, jab. I wanted to make it educational. Um, hopefully that you guys could just watch this a few times as you kind of get used to some of the audios or cues. Sometimes, just like as my mother said, it took me 18 years to teach you the rules of life, and then off you go. So after a little while, of course, this is a very very good, we hit glutes, we hit core, we hit front, we hit the back, we hit a little shoulders, we hit posture, we worked on inside of your legs, we worked a lot in just a few exercises. So I did select some exercises that got really good bang for the buck. If you have any questions at all, you know, please, please, please email me at training at fleetfeetstlouis.com. Thank you.